How do I light that label? How do I get that patch of light on the model? How do you achieve such fine control? In this video, I'm going to compare a top-end precision lighting modifier against a cheaper alternative. This lighting modifier is called a projection attachment, and it allows you to precisely focus very small patches of light for a variety of subjects. It also has the ability to modify the shape of those patches and bring them sharp or soft by utilizing the projection lens and the internal gobo blades. Other similar modifiers also allow me to project pre-cut templates for effects. These are both rather expensive lighting tools, so it's unsurprising that I get asked a lot if there is a cheaper alternative. Well, I found one, but I didn't know if it was any good. So I decided to test it for you. So here we have three different types of projection attachments. We have my favorite and most used, which is the Pico light with the projection attachment on it, which has its own built-in gobo blades, which I'll come to. We have the larger Pulso Spot 4, which is a much more powerful unit and projects uh, pre-cut gobos and templates. Again, I'll show you that in a moment. And then this uh, economical one that I picked up uh, in a Bowens fit to fit on this Godox light and it comes with a 50 millimeter lens attached to it and also a range of various gobo templates that you can put into it. Now the question remains which one has the most precise control? Because one of the most obvious reasons for using these type of projection attachments is to project light to very specific areas. And I use my projection attachment all the time for lighting nibs of uh, makeup or little slithers of light or patches on models. And that very fine control of those patches of light and how sharp or how defocused you can make them and how small you can make them is absolutely crucial to what I do. So it'll be interesting to see if this can match that. And then the next crucial thing to consider is the power output. How much light, how efficient are they at transferring the light energy to the subject? So here we have a 600 joule lamp. Uh, the other lamps over there are much more powerful. We have a 3,200 joule capable uh, lamp here, and we have a 1,600 joule capable lamp here. So I need to turn the power on the pack down to 7.5 from 10, which would be 3,200 joules, down to 7.5 to match 600 joules. So they now all have equivalent of 600 joules of power coming through them and we will discover when I do the test images which one outputs the most light energy or can transfer most of that light energy through the projector. But before we do that let's take a look at the features and what they do. So this is the gobo holder for this light, and this is just the small circular template. I'm just going to slide that in to its holding position, which looks like it's about there. It is there. That There you go. You see that gives us a projection of a circle on the wall. Now we can defocus or sharpen that up. So that's the amount of light we're getting on that one. I'm going to put the same equivalent into the Pico light projection attachment. You can say it looks, looks very, very similar in size and actually in brightness, there's a slightly cent brighter central hotspot. This isn't generally what you use these for. The uh, Pulso Spot 4, as you can see, is much brighter and a bigger circle. It's a bigger unit with a bigger projection lens. Um, and that again, that's not really how you use it. You can use it as a sort of theatrical spotlight if you want to but the main intention is to put the larger gobos in. These are actually Roscoe gobos, and there are a huge amount of choices in the Roscoe range. This one you can see is like a chateau window, which I'm going to insert into um, this particular unit. Now, 
this particular unit with the inserts um, will have a larger range of templates than uh, was delivered with the other projection attachment, the cheaper alternative, and they are also a larger size. The other advantage of the Pulso Spot 4 is that if you remove this, you can put the Fresnel lens on there and use it as a Fresnel spotlight, which obviously the, the other ones can't do. So as you can see, there is a gobo in there, which I can defocus or sharpen up. And we can actually project that to a very large size simply by moving the Pulso Spot 4 further away. So if you're doing a fashion shoot and you want a really large shadow of a window, chateau window on the wall behind your model, etc., you just simply keep moving this light further and further back and then refocus it. So there's a lot of versatility and it's an extremely powerful lamp at 3,200 joules capability as well. Now, if we move over to the <clears throat> other ones, which have a slightly different purpose, if I take out the circular template, the interesting thing about the Picolite projection attachment is its versatility with these blades. It has a set of four gobo blades, as you can see here, that I can adjust to change and create any sort of rectangular shape or triangular shape um, from using just the adjustments on the blade. And again, I can cause that to go out of focus or I can cause it to become pin sharp. Now, this is particularly interesting when lighting very small objects. You know, we can literally create the tiniest slither of light, as you can see there, right down to the tiniest speck of light there. I mean, look at that light. Can you see that is smaller than my little finger nail there, a tiny, tiny dot of light that I've created by just manipulating these blades into position, which allows me to light the tiniest objects without affecting anything else in my scene, or very, very thin, slithers of light to light the edge of a product or the side of something very precisely. I've also used this to light models. You, there were, there's one shot that I did where I created a diagonal patch of light. You have to remember that actually everything on these is back to front because it's a projector. But you can create patches of light and shapes of light onto your model uh, across the face, across the eyes, different angles, etc., etc., And then you can defocus those for effect if necessary. The other beauty that I use this for, the other wonderful thing, is creating patches of light on cosmetic labels or wine labels so that you just illuminate the wine label to bring it out in the shot or lift up the cosmetic label. And you do that by defocusing the light uh, just to soften the edges of it on that label. So for me, the interesting thing is whether or not that can be done more economically, because we get a lot of questions when people see me using this light about whether or not there is something available that can do a similar thing. So I did a bit of research and I came across this Bowens Fit projection attachment um, with the gobos and we had these Godox lights so I thought well let's get that are also the Bowens fitting so let's get one and let's give it a try. Now unfortunately this particular projection attachment does not have uh, the gobo blades like the Pico light one that you can bring in and adjust. So all I've got are the options of whatever gobo templates came with it. And unfortunately, they're quite limited. You know, they're, they're, they're the sort of things that, you know, like a set of Venetian blinds, for example, or patches of light, which might be useful for some food photography. But by and large, I, I mean, what am I meant to do with these for lighting products? So I started asking myself, well, how can we overcome this? You know, can we, can we use one of these and think about maybe just using one circle? And then I thought, well, actually that circle is, 
is very large. It's too large to even use for lighting a product, photo a product photograph or a small item. So I came up with another trick, another idea. And that idea was to take the circular one and wrap a little piece of tin foil around it and see if I could make my own hole within that piece of tin foil. So basically inserting the tin foil into there, the smallest thing I can find obviously is a pin and I'm making a pin hole. One pin hole in there and then let's see how large that turns out when it's projected. And you can see there it is on the wall. And let me refocus. So there's, that's basically the projection magnification because you saw me make that hole. That is a pinhole. And I can't really make anything any smaller than that manually. Whereas with this particular projection attachment, if I go back to sharpening it up, you can see with the blades, I was able to make a much smaller and more precise patch of light. So in this case, as you saw earlier, I'm just gonna try and get that back again. And as you can see there, I've got the tiniest, tiniest slither of light. And if we put the two side by side, there you can see the one on the left is the pinhole that I made in the tin foil, and the one on the right uh, is the gobo blades finely controlled. So certainly we have a lot more precision with the Pico light. However, in saying that, a lot of the time you don't use these lights that far away. So we could take the light a lot closer and that will reduce the size of the pinhole that we made. So by going in very close, we can get that down to about that size and we can defocus. So it is perfectly feasible that we could use this to light labels on fragrance bottles or wine bottles by using our own pinhole tinfoil masks. And you can see I can get that quite small by going in close, but it isn't quite as versatile as the Pico because obviously if I bring the Pico in closer, then of course I can also get that light to be much smaller as well. So precision wise on first glance, this certainly doesn't have the precision of the Pico light projection attachment, but it is not a bad alternative considering that with a little bit of work, you could probably make this work for you. So the next thing I want to test really is efficiency. At 600 joules on each lamp, how much light do they actually put out? So I've focused both lights on the wall. They're both set to the equivalent amount of power, 600 joules on this light at full power. And that one on 7.5 is equivalent to 600 joules. Roughly the same size projection on the wall. I have my camera tethered at F11 and I have the Godox trigger to fire this light and the slave uh, cell on the other one will be picked up so it should fire both as it does there. So I'll take a photo and we'll see if they both put out the same sort of exposure. So that's good. They actually look quite similar. If anything, maybe the Godox one is a tiny bit brighter, but it's a possibility that the blades on my Pico light are not exactly in the center, whereas the pinhole is in the very center of that other hole. So your most efficient projection is going to come from the middle. So that's probably uh, the variable there. The problem though for the Godox one is we can't really make a smaller hole than a pinhole. You saw the hole that I made in uh, the uh, tin foil, in the aluminium foil. Now I'm going to make the hole on the right as small as I possibly can.
Now, when we make the hole smaller, we will lose a lot of light, but I've got plenty of more energy to gain out of this one. So I'm going to go up another stop and I'm going to go in, take the shot again. Okay, so that's another shot. Now, there we go. We can see <clears throat> how much more precise we can get with the Pico projection attachment. And that's with them still some distance away from the wall. I mean, we are talking less than a fingernail size, half of my fingernail size on the projection attachment at the moment, my little finger, but I can't really go smaller than a pinhole. But as I did say before, it would be possible to bring your light in a lot closer and then refocus. So fine for labels, fragrance labels, wine bottle labels, etc. You can highlight those small areas, but not as precise as the Pico light, which of course, when we bring that in as close, we can make it even smaller as well. Generally speaking though, when you're doing product photography, you don't really want your lights in super, super close. You want to be able to keep them some distance away. And obviously the distance away is going to affect the size of the projection. But there you can see the precision level of control with one compared to the other. I'm just going to refocus that to get that bit. To, yeah, there you go. There you can see the precision level of control from one over the other. We are now down into way, way smaller than my fingernail size. As a matter of fact, let's get something to gauge the scale. There's my wedding ring. So you can see the size and scale approximately of each projection attachment from those lights. So not a bad result with this independent brand one with the Bowens fitting. Um, it can work and I think by modifying it and using aluminium foil and tweaking it and adjusting the distance of the light away from your subject, it certainly has some uses. So, as expected, the results speak for themselves. But with a little bit of work and ingenuity, you can make the less expensive option work for you. Well, I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.